Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Lee John Blackmore here at Super Easy Guitar. Welcome to your very first guitar lesson. Now, if you've seen some of my videos before and you're already familiar with the guitar, then stick around because you never know, you might learn some stuff as well. Or if you know someone that's just got a guitar for their birthday, for Christmas, or they've just found one on the street, or you've given them one, why not send this video over to them as well and they might learn something from it, okay? And I'm sure they'll appreciate it. I know I will, so thank you very much. Now, before I get into showing you some cool stuff to learn on the guitar, I'll just run th through a few things that'll help you understand your guitar and get to know your guitar a little bit better. Now, to help you guys out, what I've actually done below, if you hover over the taskbar, you might know how to do this already. I've added chapters into this video so you can skip along to whichever chapter you find is relevant to yourself. If you can't see that come up, just hit the drop down box below for the information and the chapters are also in the information section. So first of all, we've got the fundamental parts, okay? We've got the body, okay, the neck and the head. Okay, let's start on the body, okay? So it's called a body, obviously, the body of the guitar. They come in all different shapes and sizes. This is an acoustic guitar. Yes, you can get electric guitars, you know, all sorts of different styles and types. It doesn't really matter. They all pretty much do the same thing, okay? So on here, we have this hole here. It's what we call a sound hole. And underneath, we've got, kind of got this pretty thing here. They don't all have them. This one does. It's called a scratch plate. And that means, you know, when we're playing, we're not going to damage the guitar. All right. Um, and here we've got what we call a backstock or bridge. And it's where the strings actually connect into the guitar by pegs. And these little things pop in and out. Um, not when it's under tension, not when the strings are tightened. That is uh, when we want to change the strings, we just pop them out. OK, as we come uh, up the, towards the neck here, we can see we've got these these shapes cut out. And they're what we call cutaways. Not all guitars have these as well. And the reason I have this one, it allows me to play. I guess it's slightly more advanced, whereas it allows you it allows you to play the higher frets. OK, this other cutaway here is actually built for your leg. OK, to sit comfortably. So the last thing you want to do is kind of have the guitar leaned like this. It's built to hold the guitar. Now, you'll probably notice, hang on a minute, my guitar doesn't sit on my lap. I have to hold it here. That's not correct. You actually hold it here with your arm, okay, and sit comfortably here. You shouldn't have to hold the neck at all. You will see some guitarists hold their guitar on another knee. They might put a stool up or something and they'll hold it like this and... And that's fine as well, okay? It's purely about comfort and what you prefer to do, okay? And it's always good to have good posture. You don't really want to learn the guitar like this either, okay? That's going to hinder you more than help you. So as we come away from the guitar, you might see I've got a couple of little buttons here, and that's because it's plugged in here. This is actually, a, actually an electroacoustic which means I can amplify it when I'm playing live, okay? Again, it's not a necessity. As you come up the fretboard, <clears throat> you can see we've got these little lines and they tend to get wider as they get further away from you. And that's because when we press down a string on the fretboard, it actually makes a connection. That little line, that bar, or what we call a fret, makes a connection between the bridge and the fret, okay? And obviously the smaller that gets, the smaller that point gets, the higher the tone gets on the guitar. Okay? So that's kind of like your highest tone there. And then your lowest tone is going to be between here and the bridge. Now this is what we call the nut. And that's right at the bottom of the fret, of the neck rather, okay? And as you can see, the low frets are down here and you can count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, okay? And you see we've got these little motifs and sometimes they're followed by dots. Now these dots are just to help us learn where to put our fingers. Some guitars don't have them at all, which is great, and some do and they just look pretty. And that's all they're there for, really. So um, looking at the strings, this is a six string guitar and it's a six string steel guitar. 
Yes, some strings have, some guitars have more strings, if I learn to speak properly. Some guitars have more strings. Sometimes you can get a 12 string guitar or a seven string guitar, and there's all sorts of different variations on the market now. This is just a standard six string guitar with steel strings. Sometimes they come in nylon strings for kind of classical or flamenco guitars. That's fine as well. Don't worry about that too much now. It just gives you a different tone. Okay, so going down the end of the neck or the fretboard, if you like, we end up on the head. <clears throat> so the head is just where the strings wind, okay, onto these winders um, to help us tune the guitar. Now these winders, or we can call them tuners, and they just go around this little tuning rod here, um, also known as a machine head. And they just wrap around in a certain direction and we by turning them, we can tension them and make the strings a higher pitch or lower them and they become a lower pitch. It's very important in the beginning when you do adjust these things, if you don't really know what you're doing, it's very important to, to get some help and just do things very slowly, okay? If you do need help, check out some of the videos online, get yourself a guitar tuner like I've got here or you know, there's free apps online. There's the there's the Fender Tuner. There's tons of free, you know, I'm not going to go through a list of them, but there's tons of free apps to show you how to tune your guitar. Okay, so there we go. We've got the head, the neck, and the body. That's pretty much it for now, okay? Yes, they can be made out of different materials. We're not going to get into that right now, okay? So how do we know which strings are which and what frets are what? Because <laughs> it can get really confusing, especially in the beginning. So the way of thinking of it is you've got the thick strings here and they're the low strings because they sound lower. Okay, and then you've got the thinner strings, the higher strings. Okay, and they've all got names, which I won't go into right now, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna count them so from the first string to the sixth string, it goes up towards me. So the thinnest string is one, and the thickest string is six. So it goes like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and you can see here, I'm playing with a guitar pick. Now this is a pointy hard pick, just because I couldn't find one of the medium ones I had at the moment. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. If you are going to use a guitar pick, which I kind of recommend if you want to do the more complicated stuff later on, it's good to learn with one. You can always throw it away later on. Um, this is just, uh, you can use a standard pick, go for a kind of soft to medium pick. And you know, people always ask me different questions about picks. It's just finding something that's comfortable for you experiment and see what sounds good that's it's you don't really have to worry about it too much in the beginning but it's always a good idea to get to grips with it and talking of that the way I grip it is just between my first finger and my thumb and so when I'm looking when I'm looking down it kind of the guitar pick looks like it's coming out the side of my thumb so when my thumb is strumming down <laughs> pick is kind of on the side, right? Okay, coming out the side of my thumb like that. Hopefully you can see that, if that makes sense. Okay, there you go. Right, so if you don't have a pick, you can just use softly the side of your thumb. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one. So if I said to you play the first string, in the third fret, okay, you find the first string, which is the thinnest string, and you count from the lowest frets, remember, one, two, three. Now, just using my first finger, it doesn't actually matter at this point which finger you use, you'll probably find it easier with your first or your second, okay? You press down behind the fret, so behind the fret, so we've got the first fret, second fret, third fret. So first string, third fret. Now these all have note names, like I said earlier. 
We're not worried about them right now. It's not a necessity to learn them just yet, okay? So if you're getting this sort of sound, it's one of a few things that's going wrong. Number one, you might not be pressing behind the fret. See as I get closer, it sounds nice. And make sure you're pressing down with your fingertip, okay? If you're pressing down with the side of your finger like that, it's never gonna sound that good, okay? Use the tips of your fingers. Now, where do I place my hand and my thumb? Sometimes you see me, I've kinda got quite long fingers, which is, you know, it's neither an advantage or a disadvantage. It just depends what type of player you are, okay? But really what we should do is hide our thumb behind the neck on the, the back of the fretboard like that, okay? And do not do this. Do not have your finger down here because you'll have nothing to hold on to, all right? So try and keep it hidden behind the neck, even though you'll probably see me playing it and that's just a, that's just a bad habit on my behalf, okay? So um, yeah, let's try another one. Let's say the fifth string on the fifth fret. So we count the fifth string, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's nearly the thickest one, not quite. Then we count five frets up, one, two, three, four, five. And there you go. Make sure your finger's on the fingertip. Make sure it's behind the fret and make sure you're pushing down, not too hard, just as hard as, as you, you know it takes to sound the guitar. If I go too hard, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna feel really sore, okay? But if I go too soft, you're gonna get this buzzing sound. It's not gonna be very nice, okay? So, fingertip, just behind the fretboard, and there you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you your very first guitar riff. So what is a guitar riff? Well, a riff is just a tiny little section, often the intro, taken from a song and in this case you might even recognize it now there's a thousand and million riffs I could show you but I'm going to show you probably the most famous guitar riff of all time on guitar and everyone should know this so why break a tradition it's called smoke on the water and the basic version goes like this So I've just played that on the sixth string, which is what we're gonna call the bottom string, okay? And I've just done it using one finger. So it's super easy. Let's have a look what I did. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna think of this as in numbers of frets. So what I played there was O, as in open string, which means no fingers, and then three, and then five. So I played O, three, five. So I played open, third fret, and fifth fret. Now to make this easy, I've done it all on the thickest string, on the lowest string, okay? However, if you're still finding that difficult, okay, you can play it on the thinnest string as well. It actually works on any string. So that, was, that would sound like this, O, three, Five. So that's the first section, 035. You can write that down if you like. So 035. And then it goes 0365. So then I'm doing 0365. You can do that on the bottom string as well, the sixth string. 035, then 0365. O, three, six, five. Put them together. O, three, five. O, three, six, five. Then it goes O, three, five again. O, three, five. And finally, three, O. Now that might seem really complicated, but if you write it down, it's much easier. Or what I find is easy is to say it out loud. O three five O three six five O three five three O. 
You might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's way too complicated. But just do one little section at a time and go super, super slow. I'm going fast in this video because, you know, you might already know this, but if I'm going too fast, just wind the video back and go through it again. Let me do it one last time, nice and slowly. This time I'll do it on the thin string, which is the first string. Here we go. O, three, five. O, three, six, five. O, three, five, three, O. Oh. And there you go. And you just need to work on speeding that up and just do it so everything rings out and sounds nice, okay? Originally, it would have been played on the two middle strings, the third and the fourth string plucked together. Okay, but we're just gonna keep it super easy for now. So there you have your very first riff, okay? Now, welcome to the club. There's probably every guitarist on the planet that can play guitar, can play that song. Well, they should play that song. If they can't, send them to this video and they're gonna learn it, okay? If you'd like to learn some more riffs, I've done a video below. You can check it out. It's called 10 Easy Songs Without Chords. So if you feel like you're not quite ready for chords yet, Check out the link below. I've done loads of different videos. There's 10 easy rock songs without chords. There's 10 easy Nirvana songs, 10 easy Guns N' Roses songs. So check them out, okay? And you can always come back to this video when you're ready to learn your chords. How do we do chords and actually play songs? So let me take you through it. Now, all a chord is a multiple notes played at the same time. Believe it or not, by not using this hand and just strumming. That's a chord, okay? It's a very ugly chord, but it's a chord. But I'm gonna show you something that sounds a lot nicer and I'm gonna show you this E chord and it sounds like this. Much nicer, right? But before we get into the left hand, okay? I want to teach you how to strum. Now it's very important that we get this hand right first in order to make the chord sound really cool. So we're not trying to do two hands at the same time. We always try and work one hand at a time, okay? So our strumming hand, whether you've got a pick or you're using the side of your thumb, we want to learn how to strum. So. Really, it's not as difficult as you think, but I see a lot of people making the same mistake. They think, you know, you have to hit the guitar really hard, which is wrong, okay? You actually have to hit the guitar really softly, but not too softly. You don't want to be like, I can't hear it. You know, it's somewhere in between, guys, right? And you just want to do it not too fast, or not too slow, okay? And all I'm doing, I'm making sure that when I'm strumming, I'm actually not strumming away from the guitar. I see a lot of people doing that. Just hold the pick or use the side of your thumb and softly go down to your scratch plate, okay? Or down to the guitar. Now when I'm strumming down, my wrist is actually quite relaxed as well, okay? You can't always see it, but believe me, when you start playing fast, now if my wrist wasn't relaxed, it would, it would get really robotic. It won't sound very nice at all, okay? So even though it looks like we're strumming from the elbow, actually there's a bit of strumming from the wrist going on as well. Now, it's a misconception that people just use the wrist. If I just use the wrist for the, you know, playing songs, you get this. You don't want that either, okay? You want a little bit of both. Okay, so the wrist has to be relaxed and the elbow has to be relaxed. And it's kind of this you know, flicking of the wrist, but you want to do it with control, okay? Otherwise, it's going to sound really nasty. Okay, so let's have a look at your first chord. So your first chord is going to be E, 
So I can show you this riff that I was doing in the beginning. The first finger goes in the first fret on the third string, okay? Second finger in the second fret on the fifth string. Third finger in the second fret as well on the fourth string. And notice my fingers are always behind the frets. Now you can see this one isn't as close, but that's fine. As long as you push down, it's still gonna sound good. Now the way we strum, watch this here, from the lowest string. Okay, notice my thumb is tucked behind here. Okay, you can see it just creeping over, that's fine. But make sure your grip isn't tight on the guitar like this. Make sure you've got lots of space under here. And the fingers almost bridge over those other strings. So you're not touching those other strings. Make sure you strum and nice and slowly. If you've got something like this, that's probably because you're not pushing down quite hard enough, your fingers aren't in the right positions, or your fingers aren't on the fingertips, and they might be touching the neighboring strings. So there are a few things to look out for there, guys. Make sure you go over the strings, almost like a crab claw, bridge them over. strum nice and slowly. So what I did at the beginning, really softly, down, up, down. Watch what I do here, down, up, down. I'm not being too, I'm not holding the pick too rigidly. Down, up, down down up down okay I'll put my thumb where it should be down up down now if you take your fingers away you can play O three O three O three O put the hand back on down up down O three O three O three O now you see what I did there I used my pinky my fourth finger to play that just that bottom string, the sixth string, O three O three O three O O three O three O three O. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's way too hard, but it's something to work towards, okay? Now some of my younger students, like seven years old, I've taught them how to do this. Down up down. Then just the bottom string, O, three, O, three, O, three, O. Down, up, down. So that's great, we're able to play an E chord. Let's have a look at playing an A chord. It's just three fingers in a row. And this time we're not gonna play the thick string which is the sixth string. We're not gonna play that one. It's three fingers in a row in the second fret. They're all in the second fret together. So my first finger is in the second fret on the fourth string, second finger, second fret on the third string, and third finger, second fret on the second string. Now, you must make sure that the top E is ringing out because a lot of people We'll kind of get this sound. You don't want that. You want to make sure you're not hitting those neighboring strings. And this time you want to strum from the fifth string, okay? The reason being is that string is called the A string. Next we've got the D chord. It sounds like this. That's the first finger in the second fret on the third string. Second finger, second fret on the first string third finger in the third fret on the second string. Okay, and again, you don't want to play the thick string here. You want to avoid that strum from the fifth or the fourth. Doesn't matter which one, but not the thick one because it'll sound pretty terrible. Okay, so sometimes when we're playing chords, we must miss certain strings. Again, make sure You've got lots of room under here. You're not touching the neighboring strings with your fingers. 
you strum nice and slowly down to the guitar. If you're getting this, push a little bit harder, make sure your fingers are in the right position and make sure you're arching over the strings and using the tips of your fingers. So we're just going to add two more chords onto that. The next one is going to be C. It looks like this, sounds really nice. And then G. So let's have a look at that C chord. So first finger, first fret on the second string. Okay. Then second finger, second fret on the fourth string. Third finger, third fret on the fifth string. There's your C chord. Again, I'm not playing this bottom E, this thick string. Okay, the sixth string. I'm not playing this. That will become apparent as we get into the more advanced lessons, guys, okay? I'll explain why. So that's our C chord. Again, all the same principles apply. Make sure your thumb's behind. Make sure you're not touching the neighboring strings. I'm not using that pinky, it's just three fingers. At this point you might be saying, oh my gosh, my fingers are hurting. And you've got lines in your fingers. Me too. It's completely normal. Okay. They will stop aching after a few days. Just keep going with it. All right. And they get, you know, they get tough to it. Okay. So you stop, they stop hurting after a while. So there's your C chord. And finally, we want a G chord. So we've got first finger, second fret on the fifth string, second finger, third fret on the sixth string and third finger, third fret on the second string, and you can put your pinky underneath it on the first string. Sometimes you'll see it play, being played different. You'll be, see it being played without that third finger, perhaps. That's a normal G, but I like to play the sweet G. It sounds a bit nicer with those two fingers down there. Plus, if you're gonna learn any Oasis, going to learn any of that stuff you're going to get very familiar with that chord okay so there you go there's your g string remember don't touch the neighboring strings use your fingertips make sure you push down hard enough and this time you can play all of the strings if you think you're ready to play some chord songs you can find another couple of videos below and i've done 10 easy songs using just three chords the first video is actually with the chords G, C, and D. And the second video is with the chords E, A, and D. Just by using those three chords, you can learn 10 songs. So altogether, there's like 20 songs to choose from there, guys. They're really super easy to play, super easy to learn, and they're good fun. Let me know in the comments box below how you get on. And if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments box. I love to read them and I'll reply if I can. So there's also another video I've done, guys. I've put the link below and it's called Zero to Guitar Hero. So I go a bit more into depth on talking about the different parts of the guitar, playing you some different songs and using different techniques. And I'll take you through step by step until hopefully you become a hero guitar player, all right? So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed your very first guitar lesson. I do these lessons weekly, so make sure you lean over and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to receive my weekly updates. There are also some links below for some cool t-shirts for sale, and I've done a Spotify playlist for virtually all the songs I've done lessons for, okay? Really appreciate your support guys, I'll see you again the same time next week.